Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. All right, so you've got me on this flipper pendant kick for you newbies who just joined us in live stream this last month. A bunch of you members were like, show us the little tiny flipper pendant. Show us the small flipper pendant. So I did. I gave you the marquee and I gave you the uh, little oval calcidney. And I said in the live stream, for those of you who haven't seen it yet, that I was just determined to find something to do with my delicious little candy-colored cat's eye. These are synthetic. We can get them online at any major marketplace. Um, they come, I think, Amazon, you know, if I can say the A word. Anyway, um, 60 pieces to 12, and they're 12 millimeter, super fun, and they're super thin, so I didn't think I could use them. But then look how strong. So they're perfect for these little flippers. So these are 12 millimeter. We'll do a circle this time. These are 12 millimeter discs. They're very thin, thin I would say, maybe not even two millimeter, maybe one millimeter, one and a half in the center. Okay, so 20 gauge wire, round, soft copper, 13 inches long. And uh, I need a dowel to make my circle. And this nice little wooden ring mandrel is the perfect dowel for that. The smallest size happens to be quite perfect. So if you don't have one of these, whoop, you can um, go to the local hardware store, Home Depot. They sell dowels. Either bring this little guy with you. They're a few dollars, you know and they come usually a few feet long um, and then you just cut it down to like four inches and use them. I show them all the time. I have tons of those, right? This one just happens to be a ring mandrel that came that came with my ring mandrel kit I bought online too. Quite inexpensive but I needed a new rubber mallet and I wanted this one so this was a kit. Okay so anyway Twelve millimeters, I got a dowel that fits quite right. And now I'm gonna find the center of my thirteen inches of twenty gauge. And I'm just gonna get close to the top of the ring mandrel where I know I wanna fit my size. We can always take it smaller. I tend to like to, you know, if I only have a choice of a bigger dowel or a smaller dowel, I tend to like to go a little bigger and then I can shrink it up. It's harder to grow the circle than it is to just shrink it up. I'm a little awkward because I'm trying not to run into my camera up here. But basically you would just make a complete circle. Around that mandrel, just like that. That's why I show the short ones, <laughs> the short uh, dowels like this, so I don't have to run into my camera. But I didn't have 10 mil uh, 12 millimeter. Anyway, so I've made my little circle. I can already see it's too big, but I'm gonna go check my fit. It's too big. So to shrink it up, I'm just gonna do real controlled pulling. You wanna keep it nice and round, right? Or you can get a smaller dowel. That's pretty good. I'm looking to the top of it to fit my stone. This one you can just even use the edge of the stone if you need to. Right, just hold it like that, shape it. Circles are kind of hard to fit, at least for me. I, I can fit a lot of other things, but circles are hard. Okay, so we should be riding, again, just right over the top shoulder of the stone. Um, I'm gonna go a little bit smaller because it's almost there, but not quite. Could have used my plier, this would have been cleaner, but I don't have 12 millimeter. Okay, about like that. Okay, just so so that you can put it on the top of your stone, but it 
presses down like a flipper, <laughs> like a flap. Okay. When you get it the shape that you want it, I just tend to hold it right here. Get a fine plier. Just carefully lift it to horizontal. I can tap out any munchie I made like this. Okay, just on the side there. Nice and straight again. No big deal. I'm going to flip it over so that I have the same kind of leverage with the same kind of hand motion. Hold it right there at the intersection. Hold your loop so it doesn't shift. Don't move anything. Just bend up. Let them come together. Do some more little straighten tappings. Tappings to straighten. Like that. Like that. That should be pretty good. Okay. Practice circles. These are still 15 years later. It's still so hard for me. I might be fibbing on 15 years, might be more. Okay, that fits pretty well. Don't worry if it's a little off because we're going to bend this back. What you're concerned with is this, the head of this, the, the upper, say, you know, 95% fitting the stone because we're going to bend back right there. Okay, phew. Okay. So in the other ones, we had to make some room for the girth of the stone. This one, hardly anything. So let's just go ahead and get our tie on here. I'm going to take um, 22 gauge half round wire. If I can find my 22 gauge half round wire. Here we go. And I'm going to take a foot of it. Maybe 13 inches. You could be using 28 gauge wire if you want, 26. And if you're using half round, we're just going to bend down the upper inch here. Make sure your flat sides to the inside. Hold your little spoon that you made. Slip in there. Just hold it together. Hold that little one inch you gave yourself so it doesn't travel. And then make three nice wraps. Tension should be even. They're side by side, you know, but they're not so tight that they can't move. We can still move. You see? Okay. I'm just going to straighten this first one out. Okay. And right about here, Right here at the neck, since I know I have a solid fit, I could hammer this by the way if you want to, I'm not going to, but see, just over the soft shoulder. So right here at the neck, you can do this if you're careful with metal plier, give you some leverage, or I tend to like to hold on to the entire circle just like this, you get the little where it curves right there. Just make a 90, okay? Just like that. We don't need it to be as thick as this plier, so we're not going to go back over the plier, but just get it up like that. Take a small metal plier. I'm sorry, grip the back. So just grip it right there, right at the edge, with a small fine plier that's about one millimeter, because this stone is so thin. You could even do it with, um, with round nose if you if you have a nice little fine round nose I'll show you that here here I got a little round nose you know I could hold it right there because this one is so thin and you're just gonna complete the turn make a little space like that I like to use these just hold it tight just hold it tight right there together. So a line straight up the back, just like that. Give a little backward push. Okay. 
Okay, obviously, it's, it's going to be fiddly. I'm not going to lie. But obviously, he's going to sit right there. And that should be a decent fit. It's okay if he's a little bit big because we can tie to the shoulders, right? It's not going to be too big. And we can also squeeze. This little opening is so that you can make some tiny adjustments like this. That's how I do it anyway. Other people might do it differently, but this is how I do it. So, you know, if, if, if I had too much gap and my stone kept popping out the front, what I might do down here at the little opening is just take my plier and do a real gentle squeeze and close it up a little bit more. Okay? Work carefully. All right? Should sit just like that. Here's the back. I'm trying to get so close my camera's not focusing. Okay, you see that? This should be a nice fit like that. If you got a bubble, just take your finger, push the bubble out. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfectly flat, but you don't want a big, big bubble back here. Okay, so let's do the rest. You can take the stone out, rest your hand. Okay, so we, we need to make room because this little bard isn't stable enough to hold that in there. Okay, so take the plier. Let's get rid of this last wrap if we don't need it anymore. I was trying to get this wire, this last wrap, nice and tight, and then I ended up messing the whole thing. Okay, so everything back under control. Get this last wrap nice and tight. Snip it right where you see my plier, and then turn the cut under. So, like here. Not so far that it pokes out the other side. Flip it. <clears throat> Tap it on top. Get it all the way over. Okay? We want it to sit down here so that we have some room. If you feel like you want this one, maybe later, you can leave them on. Let's just make it clean. Trim them out. Save the length, because that's what we're using, right? Normally, I just keep them attached and I go up, but I'll show this one different, because the other two show that. But I trim it out later. Okay, so there's your nice few wraps. And now we have to make room. So it's a small space, you just get a flat nose plier, or even your, your bents. You split these two with your fingernail, just like that. Just keep things even. And hold it right there. I'm not really holding it more than I'm just stabilizing it so that I can pull this out. I'm holding it on, I'm pressing it against the back of my hand. Just make a nice, sharp, close, tight bend right there. Now you can take your plier and right about, right about the middle you know, where they intersect right here, turn them back into a, like a diamond and come back up the top. So right about here, I don't want it to show, so, you know, stay to the back. So right about there. Maybe that's four millimeter. Hold everything. Make a sharp bend. Cross the center top. See? Cross the center top. And then right here, hold everything. Brace against your circle. Turn vertical. There it is. Okay, nice and clean. Now you do the other side, and you don't have to measure because you have the, the measure of the circle, and the, you have your measure right, right in your hands. Okay. So hold it however it's best for you. I know i got to turn it up into a diamond right before. So close. Cross the center, cross the top center. It's okay if they're a little, ooh, that one's really uneven, isn't it? Ooh, 
<laughs> and that's what you get for working in a camera, folks. Let me show you how to undo that that puppy. Gently boss. Gently coaxed it backwards. <laughs> Reverse in time. There you go. Look, look up top. Make sure you don't have a just bend this way, tap it out. You're not making crushing taps, you're just making correcting taps. Woo! Okay. <laughs> okay, well there you learned something. Let me get underneath it. Okay, I'm gonna hold it right here. I'm just eyeballing evenness with the other side. Okay, and I'm gonna turn it up against my plier. See, I can motion my plier over a little bit and coax the wire into a good length. Okay, cross the upper center. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be better than the last one I just did. Okay. Just because we all want it nice. Just something like that. Okay. I'm just going to sharpen this one up a little bit. Make it look a little better. A little more even with the other one. Okay. Just like that. A little better. There we go. <laughs> All right, I know you guys are working yours too. It's okay, we can all giggle while we create. Okay, take it here, same thing, take it up to the top. Okay, that's kind of what you want right there. Just like that, just a little back seat for your stone. Make sure it's all nice and level. It's okay to have this little forward slope, but here, you know, if we need to tap these guys, tap them. turn them level. Okay, you guys. Put your stone back in there. Ooh, and it should fit brilliantly just like that. It'll still be squiggles because we haven't locked it in. Let me see. Come up here. Let's see if you can see it. Just like that. You see, I'm just over the shoulders and inward. If I need to, you know, close them up, remember we can squeeze down here a little bit. So look this way, it looks pretty good. It's a little bit big and that's okay too because we're gonna drop wire down the sides so you don't want it crushing. Make sure these rails are even. So we always check in profiles before we continue because maybe you're level, you just don't know it because you're, you know, maybe your opening is good and you don't know it because you're not level on both sides. See, now I didn't need to make any adjustments. I just needed to level out my wires. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's take the continuation of this half round. So you should have a little pressure. It isn't going to stay in there, but start to feel the catch. Just work that until you're happy. Okay, come out. That's a little better than I think. Okay. All right. Get your remainder half round. It's, I think now probably, I don't know. What did I say? I get 13 inches, so it's probably 12. Just Take down the first half an inch or so. You don't need to waste it. And then you can get on your frame. Don't try to hold it all down here. It's going to be clumsy. Get up here and start. Okay. Hold on to your fragment. Make three. Don't make them super tight, but make them so that they're even, but enough to move. Okay. Clean them up. Now just slide them down here. It's a lot easier than trying to start them down here. Okay, you got a wire here in case your circle is kind of big and you need you need to tie to the shoulders. You can. Okay? You don't have to, but you can. That's that gives a little more pressure this way. We shouldn't have to. So I'm gonna keep that little one because I need to wrap. If I don't have something to hold on to, then the whole thing travels up. Okay? And you'll wrap until you get to about an inch and a quarter is what I like. You can go an inch, you can go, you know, too, don't go too much bigger for this little pendant, but an inch or an inch and a quarter. Okay, so just wrap up. I'm keeping the flat side of my half round against my round wires here, my round frame wires. 
once I get a little comfortable distance, I'm going to tap them flat. Keep your round wires or your square wires, whatever you're working, side by side. Don't let, don't let these two frame wires buckle up. So hold close on your wrap. Keep going. So today and tomorrow, we are expecting snow and sub-zero, uh, I mean, uh, freezing cold temperatures, single digits. So it's a good time to get cozy and wrap. If they come apart, just squeeze. If you got one that bubbles out like mine right there, don't stress it. Just keep going. Don't let your half round twist. Okay. As I work, I'm just, you know, I'm not really stroking down this wire more than just kind of guiding my half round and keeping the leading wire, you know, nice and straight as I go. So it makes this little turns and see, I adjust and come closer because then it's easier. And it doesn't have to be the exact, you know, one and a quarter because this is a tiny pendant and, and the hole will be real small up here. So this is about what I need. And then you should have a couple inches, you know, left over. Just tap everything. I still have a tree of life I want to give you before the end of the month. The end of the month is like three days away. <laughs> okay, here we go. See that? Okay, now obviously this is going to flip down and make your bail. So make sure everything is upright and center. We tapped everything. It's nice. You can hold right here. Brace with your index and Give a slight backward push, okay? And here in the middle, just use your thumb and start to make a curve for your bail. Bring these wraps to meet these wraps. But look, the wire is gonna collide when it gets to this first rail. So you can open these first. Just get a nice split on them that's even. And then when you come down, just guide your wrap right there. You see how the wire's colliding? Just move them out almost to horizontal. Okay, that's pretty good. But don't worry, the round wire wants to do this. You just, it's okay. Just keep them facing forward. Give some taps if you need them. Okay, we've got the half round living from the leading wire and now we have the half round from the end of the wire so if we needed to tie the shoulders we've got half round in both positions ready to do that okay bring this all the way down to meet the other wraps just like that okay there should be a little space now that your stone lives in okay just gonna leave all this hanging we might not need them and I'm gonna slip my I think I'm going to use the blue one. Slip it back in there. That looks super nice. Oop. I'm just going to use my fingers. It'll be slippery until we come down the sides. Don't worry. And that looks pretty good. Should be like that. I don't think I need to tie my top, but I can. I'll show you so that we can, just in case you have a different one, because sometimes you do need to tie the top. Okay, so I'm just gonna use my long one. I'm not gonna fiddle this little guy. So I'm gonna trim him out, but I'm gonna trim him in such a way that I can bring him back to the inside. So, snip. Just give a millimeter or two. 
over the two back, tuck it inside. Yeah, we could have gone around this, this single one here too, but sometimes with these little bits, that even creates a little bulk, so we don't, there's no weight in these little tiny stones. So usually these bends will stay, you know, because there's, there's just nothing to the weight of this stone, so it shouldn't challenge anything like that. Okay. So I'm going to make sure that I'm all nice and my bale's nice and level. I need to pinch it. Just like that. Get these two horizontal wires kind of level with the upper ring. Your half round is going in a certain direction already, okay? Let's take one lap around the entire neck so that we lock the neck down to the pendant. Keep the half round face in your frame. And when you get back to the front, see one is all we need. Again, this is such a lightweight pendant that we don't actually have to worry about stressing the wire. Okay, get back to the front. We're gonna loop right here and catch the, the upper ring. You want to push so that you've got room to go through and, and have it be tight, but not so tight that you crush out the space that he has to fit into. I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to see I'm tying the loop to this up here, not to the back, right? And I didn't pull these closed so much that I'm going to challenge the fit. One is all that it takes. It's a tiny little pendant, so we don't, you know, we don't need to do like five of them, unless you want to for a design. So I've got one just by going to the back, and now I'm gonna go to the other side from the back. Okay, keep your half round in order. Just get it going this way. So I don't have to tie on another wire to catch this side. And then same thing, one loop one stitch right there at the shoulder okay so that's enough to tie that together and before I cut things I'm gonna put this stone back in and I'm just gonna let him you know live there for a minute okay slip it back in there and that should be a nice fit and that's your capture for this one use your fingers settle things it's 20 gauge, it's easy to move, it's easy to work with your hands, okay? Very nice, right? So now obviously these two rails are coming down. You can leave this up here, or if you want them out of your way, you know, and you wanna do one more secure round, come around the front. Go to the back. Make one tying loop around here. Okay, I'm gonna make one stitch. Make sure your flat side stays down. It's kind of the trick of working this half round. You're always trying to, and that this stays neat right here. Hold it all so it doesn't bubble. Slip through. Catch it, don't pull too tight because you don't need to. Don't take everything out of shape, just get it locked down, just like that. Snip it right here, just enough to roll that over. And tuck it. Your stone still comes out, so you can pop it out if you need to. I'm at a bad angle trying to stay under the camera, so, but you get the idea there. Tuck that guy in. Okay, come back to the front. Don't work so hard that you're shifting this little tiny frame because it will shift easily. So you wanna stay nice and flat. You know, after you tie that down, 
before we go to the next one. Put it on your mat. Push the belly of the stone down. Settle out your wires and level out your pendant. Check your, you know, check that your bail is nice and center. Okay? Now, we'll go to the next step. See how that stone is edged really nicely. I'll show it from the back so you can see it a little better. These horizontal wires are riding right behind the ring. So hold everything here. Use the side of that stone. Nice and firm. Get a nice elegant slope so there's no weird shoulder bubble. Then you can use the edge of the stone to help you turn this curve. Okay? Just come down and cross the bottom center. Just like that. Okay? Real nice. It should just be there on the side. So we're going to kind of catch the side of this now. And I'll do the same over here. Just going to make a nice slope. And then start my turn using the edge of the stone here. Just stay horizontal. I mean, you know, stay flat on the same plane here. Okay? Cross the bottom, bottom center. Just like that. So now we've got one more layer around this guy. You see it? Help steady, steady those sides up. So we're going to make one more pass. Probably two, actually. So I'm going to crisscross down here at the bottom center. Um, get the tension so that when you let go, the wires don't pop out of place. They still cross right here. Okay? And you can do one wire at a t um, you know, just hold them. And we're going to do one wire at a time. We're going to start with the bottom one. We're going to flip it up and hairpin it right back over itself. So I'm going to try to hold my stone by the sides so that you can kind of see it. Okay? Get everything where you want it. There's probably just about, I don't know, a millimeter or two. You can bring them lower if you want to, but I like that. Okay, hold everything, brace against your finger, turn up 90 degree, straight over. Don't push, don't pull, just turn. Okay, so we're gonna catch the wire above it. Okay, I'm trying to let you see in the camera. So you do this how it's comfortable for you. I'm going to flip this over and go the rest of the way so you can see. Just hairpinning it right back over itself. Okay? Just to the outside of the first, you know, to the ridge of the pendant there. And now I'll take a nice squeeze. Hold the leading wire here. I'm going to show you here. Take a little squeeze. Don't crush it. Just squeeze because we can make adjustments if you don't crush it. Just like that. So we're going to lock that in. Now this guy obviously is going to flip up this way. Okay? But we need some room for elegance later. So don't go right up against here. This one's laying nice and, you know, just like that. And your bottom is center. Give a couple of extra millimeter there. And hairpin it right back on itself. So we have a little bit that we can make elegance with. Just hairpin it. Even use your finger. This little wire is so lightweight. Okay, give a small tap, control it. There, just like that, land it right up the side. You see? Okay, very nice. The stone's pretty much locked in now. Okay, you're we're in design now. You would have to pry it out now. All right, so here we go. Make elegance. Make sure you check your profile. It's nice and level. We're even. Pinch right here. Pinch, so it sloped him down. Now make elegance with your finger. This one too, make elegance. Nice curve right there. Okay, just like that. I could even turn it a little more. This top one, that's the one we're dealing with. See, I can I can still draw from the wire. Make a nice curve. So cute. Woo! I could probably end it here too, and I could make, you know, if I wanted to, a couple pair of earrings out of this. I wouldn't have made the bail so big. I would have just made a little bit. But that'd be a cute earring. All right, more. Let's do more. Okay, so make sure you're level. Let's lay it down. Press the belly of your stone. Level your wires. Okay. Okay, make sure you're 
your points nice. Bottom center. Now we're going to come up and go to the back, right? So make a nice elegant curve. Hold on the bottom. Use the edge of the stone. This time we're going to flare out a little bit, so you kind of have to use the pad of your finger a little bit. Whatever's best for you, or just give, you see how I'm giving some bubble to the wire there? Go to the back. And just pass, just right across the back. You can control that and make it cute for you. Ooh, that's darling. We'll fix any weird bubble. Just get here, nice focus. Now do the other one. Hold everything nice and flat. You can make them similar. They don't have to be though. You can make it whimsy. See how I'm just using the pad of my finger. And I'm going to pass this to the back. And just give it... So cute. Just like that. That's darling, right? Make sure they land flat. Always check the flat land first because sometimes that takes... You know, it changes the distance. Okay, that's beautiful. So you want to be kind of like that. And now from back here, you can mark them or you can just eyeball them, but we want to bend them straight back up to either side of this bale, and then we're going to bring them together. All right, so I'm just going to eyeball them like I always do. Just hold that about where I want it. I like to get a fine plier. Get to where you can reach the wire without mangling anything. So right here in front for me to be under the camera is good. I'm going to put my plier right there on the space, just beside my bale. Nice grip, not a crushing one. Don't dent and break your wire. Just so you don't slip, make it turn up. Just like that. And do the other one. The spaces don't have to be the same. It can be whimsy. Check it before you bend it with the other one because this is, you can always adjust this one for the other one. The other one's bent, so we can make adjustments, but pain in the butt to adjust the other one. So just like that, they should come together in the back nice. Just like that. You don't have to, you know, be perfect. Just so long as you're super happy with your with your front curves here. Okay? Lay it down. Push the belly. You can just let those fall out. Push the belly and put the butter, you know, push these flaps. It's right here at the curves. Land it all. Okay, so now when we pick it up, it's nice and level. And these two wires should come just to the back of your bale, right? Obviously, I'm going to tie them together. If I were thinking ahead, I wouldn't have cut that half round off. I might have left it living there, so I could have done that. I'm just showing you options, okay? Because I could do other things with this design. So let's get, let's not use half round. Let's get 28 gauge, the little wire. Let's get um, a foot of it just in case we want to do some stuff. So I got a little foot, 28 gauge. It's nice and thin for my lightweight pendant. I don't want to cause any bulk. And I'm just going to attach first, right? So just wrap these two guys up together two or three times here. Keep them side by side. They'll, they'll want to go up on each other, but just keep them side by side. Make nice three solid wraps right there. Hold on to this so it doesn't travel. Then you get a few. Go all the way around the bale. You know, through it. If you can go back down, you know, into that space, I prefer to go that way instead of up, right? Because you only need two or three. So there's space there, and that's why you're using 28 gauge, so you can get through there and make a nice, a nice tie without any additional bulk. 
And you only need to do it a couple of times. Just get it landed. We got this leading wire, right? And then we've got this one that we just tied off with. So you can take a couple of wraps around the single frame here. Twenty-eight gauges feels like thread, won't behave like thread, doesn't behave like thread, wire never does, but you can kind of use your fingers as though you were using thread. Okay, just two or three times. And then I'm going to do this one around that guy two or three times. Just use your pliers if it's too short on you. Now obviously we can trim that out. Keep the long one. Just turn that cut in. I have the long one attached here. If I want to make texture, I can coil all the way around. If I want to use it to drop beads into these nice channels, I can do that. So right now, I'm going to hang on to it um, and leave it there. Okay? Or, actually, you know what? I'm going to cut it off because I'm going to make you just add wire and if we decide to do anything else. You can do whatever you want with yours. I'm just going to cut mine off. Tuck it down. So we've got our bale, we've got, you know, our sides attached here, and now we've got some more room for design because we still have a few inches. So I'm just going to spread them evenly apart on either side of the bale. Just keep them centered here. Okay. And I'm going to take a flip over and, ch and take this wire straight through that channel, okay? You'll notice that we're not attached, right? So our center bit can still go forward and back. So just remember, uh, so I'm going to put one more layer over it, right? It, it stays because there's no weight against this pendant, but just remember that there's always that. So at some point we have to tie it or put one more layer down on it just to make sure that ultimately it doesn't split open down here. I'll show you. You see, I can push. It's like this little swing. Okay, all right. So we don't worry about that. When this one comes back down, then it's then it's solid. And then there's space there I can tuck into, or I can go to the back. It's up to you. Or I can cut and just end in a curl. So it's up to you. Let me see what I do. I'm not even sure yet. Hold everything. I'm just going to follow, you know, the, the shoulder of the previous nice, lovely curve. Just let it help me come around the stone. Leave that little channel there. I could hammer that, right? And up here, I'm just going to turn it back. Just like that. And I could actually flip back here and go again and do, some, do you know, some more with that if I want to. But for right now, I'm just going to probably do a little curl. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see what the other one does. Now maybe I'll flip it back because let's let's flip the other one first and see what it does. Okay, so up here, use my finger and get a nice little turn, making sure I leave enough room for a chain. Get a nice little decoration on it. Get a nice shoulder slope going. Make sure everything's nice and level. Hold it, because there's not a whole lot of stone there to brace against, so you kind of brace against it a little bit, but you gotta hold it. And trail it down here. So these stones are plain. That's what's fun. They're just shimmery, so it lets you do design with your wire, right? So I can take this little wire. How about we make a curl go up on that belly right there? So just so you, you know how to do a curl, or you can just dive these through the open space, cut them off, 
or you can take them around to the back. Let me just show you, right? You know, do another layer. I kind of don't like the bulk of that against this little stone. So I'm just gonna end it in a belly curl here. So I'll get that nice. Cut it right about there and take it up. Catch your fragment. Get a little round nose on it. It's hard for me to turn this and not lose the camera on you. Okay. Get a little round nose on it. Don't scratch your stone. It's synthetic, but it'll scratch all the same. Hold this curve. Turn your plier. Make it cute. Turn it until you love it. I'm going to land it right there. Just in case I need to tie it, it's near a shoulder. It's so small, I won't need to tie that. Snip the munch, just the very tip of that curl, because we always plan for that. That's excellent. I love it. And now, when I'm going to turn this little guy back, so now I know where I'm going. I just need a little bit. Now it'll be cute. Take my round nose, hold this, tight little turn, tight little turn. I'm going to go a little more. I have to turn my hand the other way, you won't be able to see, but. I'm just going to work it a little more elegant with my finger there. Get my flats, tap all that level, put a little upward belly in that wire. Okay, see if you love that. I do. Cut the munch. In my tutorials, I always plan to destroy the tips of those spirals because <laughs> my grip is hard. And then I plan to snip the tip out and clean it up. And then you use a flat if you need to until you get better. If I were doing it outside of the camera, I probably wouldn't need to do that. Okay, so now you can add, um, level it out here. So when you level this out, it'll push this down. You see that? It's going to have some little upward, upward spring. If it's got an upward spring, check the shoulder. Hold the tip down here. Don't throw yourself out of beautiful design, but just squeeze your fingernail in there. Push a little bit of pressure that way while you hold this down and it'll settle this. So after that, if it's springing up, that's, that's how you fix it. Okay. And then you can, you know, obviously it's a long run of wire, so we'll have to tie it or bead balls. This one probably would stay, but I could tie it right there. And then when you turn these out, it's going to shift these if they're untied, okay? That is so darling, I can't stand it. Okay, I just, I love it so much. Oh my God, look at how cute that is. Take a look all around. Make sure you got nice, nice level pendant. Lay it down. Push the belly. Don't push here, you know, just easy, easy on your sides. And push these, the tops of these wings a little bit. Don't crush everything, just settle it so that it lays nice. When we work with our hands up in the air, sometimes we're not on the same plane. Okay, so before I tie down, I'm going to fiddle these guys a little bit. I'm holding the curl, giving the slightest pressure. Woo. I'm going to turn it out, get a finer plier, Take the tip, pull up slightly and turn out slightly. So cute. 
We made a little ear, you see that? Toughen the wire up here a little bit. Same for this side, get a little wider plier. Hold your design. Very controlled, easy squeeze to tighten it up. Take a breath. Check them. I try to make them even. They don't have to be. Okay, and that should be nice. Hold this, the tip. Get a fine plier. If you need to or want to, turn this out a little bit, you can. I don't need to because it was already there. Turn it back in if you want to. Tie a bead ball if you want to, bead balls, or nothing. Okay, this is pretty solid by the time you do a lot of this. I would put a stitch here and a stitch here. And that's it, you guys. So cute. And so clean on the back, right? Let me get uh, a chain on it. Get some nice, pretty little one millimeter ball chain on it. And that is a darling little flipper pendant. Enjoy that. So cute. Make sure your bail is facing forward. Profile's nice. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to make like a gazillion of these. Okay, ready, set, go. Everybody make it done. <laughs> Valentine's Day is coming. Thanks again. Hope you had fun. We'll see you for the next time. Great suggestion to do flipper pendants, members. This has been a fun, fun project. All right, I'll see you for the next one. Okay, so I've taken about six inches of 28 gauge and I'm just doing some decorative and functional stitching right there. Made a few wraps. Adds a little texture, but it also holds this little arm together and that little spiral on the front. Ooh. Too big a little higher. Okay. Cut it off way back here. These wires, the ends, you're trying to get to the inside of the spring so that you can't feel anything. It's tiny, you don't have to stress it. And I'm going to do a little bit over here. Just going to get my 28 in there. Hold on to some of it so you got some leverage. Do a few stitches over here. You get the idea here. That's really all you have to do to get these decorative arms to stay in place. So these little candy uh, cat's eye are real cute, but you know, the trade-off, so a couple of things you've noticed, they're see-through. So I can see the back wire. <laughs> That's why I fought so hard to make it kind of cute. So think about that. And then, you know, certainly any other round stone works. And even if it's a 12 millimeter gemstone that's a little bit thicker, it still works. So no big deal either way you don't have to use these cat's eye these are great for practice you don't have to care if you scratch them um, because you know they come like 60 to a bag for less than 20 bucks i think and you can get a lot of practice if you make good ones you can sell them if you make good ones and you don't want to sell them you can you know put a business card on the end of them free to the finder and uh, put a little pleather 50 cent you know, rope in there and then spread your business card all over all over your local art district or old town. I leave them in, we talked about this in some live stream, but I'll remind you, I leave some of these in a, you know, when we go out to eat, I leave a tip and I leave this little guy with my business card and a cute little um, 
organza bag and I leave it for the waitress along with her tip or his tip um, or their tip. Okay, so anyway, I hope you had a good time with these. Those are some things to think about. You can decorate yours as you want. And I will see you for the next one, you guys. I want to I wanna show you what this looks like. So cute and so stable. And I don't worry about the see-through, too, because, you know, I'm showing it through my hands here, but when it's laying on a nice chest or up against the neck, you know, you don't see that back wire necessarily, except for maybe, maybe this white one you might, but just keep it in mind. So I don't stress it so much because ultimately they all lay on the neck or on the chest. So, okay. I hope you have a lot of fun with these. You can use any gemstone in them. And if the next question is, can you use a round bead with holes? Yes, you can. You can treat it all the same way. The extra benefit is that I would use that hole <laughs> and I would put my 28 gauge through it and then you can you know, tie spirals inward a little closer and just tie it all up with the, the 28 that would pass through. So coin pearls look great in here, uh, little amethyst rounds, all kinds of beads are shaped like this nice and flat, and then there they have a hole. So you can think about that. All right, gang, if you love the tutorial, remember, give me thumbs up or comments and or comments, please, so that I know how you're feeling. And uh, I know that you're having fun. I'll see you next time.